All right, what's up, boys, and welcome to How to Dominate, episode 31, no, 32, because Chase did an episode. Um, today, we're going to be uh, playing Nidalee in the jungle. This is one of the more requested um, champions. We haven't done a Nidalee commentary yet. I personally think um, Nidalee is probably one of the most absolutely fun junglers to play, along with something like Lee Sin, because it's really mechanical. You have a lot of outplay potential. You move around the map quickly. You scale walls. It's just... Um, extremely like enjoyable to you know go through the whole process of oh this guy's giving me boxes this is a support shaker but um it's fun to just go through the whole process of playing nidalee throughout the game and it's a champion that has um really high skill ceiling so if you're super good at her you can win a lot of games um i haven't played her that much recently but i played her a decent enough that like in the past i think i'm okay with it um for runes, we're going to go Dark Harvest, Sudden Impact, Absolute Focus, Water Walking, and um, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter. Pretty standard for um, Nidalee runes. For clear, we're going to be doing the same thing um, that we normally do, which is Golem Clear. Golem Clear just really OP on any champions that can really clear the jungle. Even if they can't really clear the jungle, it's still so OP. So I'm going to move back. I don't want to take an extra auto there if I don't have to. So I'm going to kite these a little bit. Like I said, you don't want to take too much damage here. Um, going to be just taking one of these and then backing. Need the two small ones. It's a Grave Showed Bot, which is fine. So one thing you want to do when you do Wraith Camp is you want to be moving back and forth. Like You don't want to just sit there and tank this camp. And when you have Hunter's Talisman, it will really regen you quick. So... Yeah, you want to just be moving back and forth, back and forth, and eventually you'll get the camp. Graves is most likely going to my blue buff. Really standard for Graves. Um, I'm going to be doing crab here, and then be going towards his blue. So this guy just saw me. Actually, I don't know if he actually was on my blue there. I don't think he was. I'm going to walk over to my own blue. We will see him if he leaves. And uh, Jace warded their jungle. That's why he was over there right then. Okay. Yeah, I didn't do my blue like I said. Going to back up. Kiting with Nidalee is how you stay full health. You won't be full health throughout the whole clear, but um, yeah, you definitely got to get used to the mechanics of it. Uh, a couple of the animation cancels you can do is with your Q, you can cancel your E and your um, W animation. So that just gives you a little bit of extra time by doing that. I'm going to pop my potion. I want to see if he did do his wraiths. There's a chance that he didn't. Nope, he did. Looks like Bot is fighting right here. I'm going to be walking down. They're getting engaged on. And we got the snipe, baby. Let's push this in. So normally, if they're trying to juke the spear, it's really hard to land max range spears on Italy. Um, really, like, <laughs> I think that Rush uh, actually had a pretty famous clip where he was like, the only way to get hit by a max range Nidalee Spear is if you have no fingers. I'm going to help him push in all the way here. Um, but sometimes if they're fighting, you can try to sneak one in there. And there I was already behind him, so there's not that much risk to the Spear. Even if I don't hit that one, we're still good. I've actually got a two-level lead. This is nice. Get it back. Could have got that stack normally, but yeah, it's just too risky there. Okay. And for items, we're going to be going... Um, we're actually not going to buy boots. Boots are not super important on Nidalee because you're so mobile anyway. I'm going to just wait for Amp Tome. So we're going to go Dark Seal Amp Tome here. Move over to the Golems. It's good that I got a kill in my first clear. I should be pretty far ahead of um, Graves because of that. I can probably just take Golems and then contest Scuttle right away. I probably won't clear my full Golem camp because I don't want to be too late to Scuttle. There's a chance that he's running there right now. 
Oh wow, that was actually like really close. That's a little bit off. I'm gonna lose some time off that though. Okay, never mind. We see the graves, so should be okay. So the you, the way you want to play into the graves here, I canceled like a bunch of autos there trying to speak, but um. The way you want to play into the graves in a fight like this is you want to be um, smart about like when when you're fighting him. You don't want to get into like melee range and just start autoing because he'll just beat you in that um, war. You want to start out with um, some autos and just like uh, keep your distance. And if you hear, hit a spear, then you can commit. If you don't hit a spear, then don't commit. Yeah, and the way that Nidalee works with the passive is when something's marked, you get increased pounce range. So it's really good to. Uh, yeah, make sure that you're marking things constantly. This guy just hits an ult. We just hit our spear. He's just dead. Yep. So you just wait for his ult, and then it just guarantees your spear, and then you get a free kill. Just like that. Oops, I just tabbed for no reason. Trying to heal myself. So bot died. This is really good. I think that there's a chance that his uh, Gromp is up. He hasn't been topside in a while, and he should have taken it. So it is up. I'm going to counter jungle him now. So once you're level six, all your uh, cougar form abilities just become even stronger. And uh, I think it's just like, it's a huge power spike for Nidalee. I was actually talking to Moon uh, about a year ago. And the way he spoke about Nidalee was, was so unique. He was uh, kept on saying, also drop a word in the jungle when you're um, counter jungling. Just, it's really good to do that. But um, one of the things he was saying is he considered Nidalee a level six jungler. Like that's how he, he speaks about Nidalee. He's like, yeah, so Nidalee is like bad pre-six, but after six, you, you really become a champion. So. That was really interesting and it changed my mindset on the champion. Now I understand like a little bit differently uh, what is like what your goals should be because your your early clear is not what it used to be. I mean, there used to be a bunch of things uh, that made Nidalee's early clear better. Uh, mainly it was that she had uh, auto resets every form change. So every time you form change, you got an auto, an extra auto off. Um, so it made her clear like way sped up. And then they uh, took uh, cool down away from her pounce early game and put it into Yeah, put it into like more damage at six and more cooldown at six So yeah, it just really changed the way that she is played. I'm assuming this guy has Decided to counter jungle me here next time Malphite ult is up. You can probably get a pretty easy gank off I'm gonna start pathing for it right now at this point um, You'll see how I play out this gank. This is gonna be a little bit different because he's further pushed up essentially what I'm gonna be doing Starting off the gank with auto attacks, and then when he commits to something, when he commits to like a direction or something, then I throw the spear. And there the spear doesn't actually have to land. He actually, I tried to throw it a little bit behind him. He kind of like uh, juked back a little bit. Um, so he was able to dodge it. But yeah, you just start off the, the um, gank with autos and then throw spears. If you can force him to dodge in a situation like that, he'll probably just die anyway. Okay, I want the um, stack here. I've got two levels on the graves. I'm gonna definitely take his blue here. Yeah, and your Q is still an auto reset in cougar form. Like one of the, the things you can gain the most out of um, with Nidalee is just going into practice tool and just practicing clearing your um, your camps. It's actually way more useful than uh, it would be for other champions because other champions, they don't normally require like skill to clear the camps, right? But Nilly actually does require skill, and uh, here what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cycling his uh, jungle. Since I already know when his camp spawned because I took them last, I can just stay here. Ends up being a really good timing for me. Free kill. Nice bubble by him. Sleepy trouble bubble. So I'll see what he took here. I'm going to take this because I have eyeball collection. I'm going to run towards bottom because they're fighting right now. I'm just going here because they're fighting. Hmm. So here I want to just um, throw spears at them continuously. Hmm. I didn't know he saw it all. That wasn't worth it. It sucks that my spear didn't one-shot him. If it did one-shot him, it would have been way better. But I should not have went for that. That was a mistake. 
Just wasn't. It was too aggressive. Okay. I should have just stayed at range and continually kept on sparing. Like, not get super excited because I hit, like, one there. Because Graves still had ult. He could just destroy me there. And I'm worth so much gold. I'm worth 675. And I just gave it to Graves, who was... He was 30 CS behind, and I'd been finding kills, and he hadn't. So I was really, really in a good spot. Those are plays you need to really start, like, controlling yourself on. Like, there, that's that's really bad that I went for that. Um, I had such a big lead accumulated that with shutdown gold now, you should just never be going for plays like that. It's just really bad. I got too hyped when I hit it. I thought I might be able to, like, pounce in, do enough AoE damage to kill multiple people, but... Yeah. I did not even get the two for one there. This will die to the burn, so I'll just keep on going. Every time something dies, you get a pounce reset as well. So there you throw it a little bit behind him. Oh, wait. Did I hit the turret there? I think I hit the turret by accident. I think I uh, misclicked there. That was my bad. It's free kill. But yeah, you throw it like a little bit behind him because you know he's going to juke. Uh, those like, they're easily, like, like I said, those spears are really easily able to be dodged. But um, a lot of time with Nidalee, I mean, it's not that long of a cooldown. Sometimes you just got to throw it. You miss every shot you don't take, right? Going to be here for the stack. Okay, he's going mid. I'm gonna try to help him out. So yeah, just get good at like scaling the jungle with Nidalee. It's really important. There's people coming back, so I should just chill. Here's the pink one from earlier that I wasn't able to clear. I'm gonna go to my top side jungle. Heal for yourself for the attack speed. And go back and clear. Now, one of the, the unique things about Nidalee is once you get strong, you clear so fast in comparison to other junglers. It just gives you, like, this advantage where you can be ganking, but you can also be, like, clearing. Oh, actually, this wasn't up yet. I thought the red was up. I'm going to actually go... Oh. I might live this. I spited for health there. Oh, man. So, I, I smited. I used my pot. Um, did everything I could. There, I'd rather smite for the health than, um, go for him. Annie's actually really scary for Nidalee because she just one-shots you. Like, Annie LeBlanc are not normally things that you want to be playing against. But, uh, we wanted to do a Nidalee commentary, so we just picked it here anyway, even though it's not the best game for it. Gonna put a trap here for Vision. Okay. Did he do his uh, wolves yet is the question. Yes, he did. We can actually kill mid with a bubble over the side. Oh, there it is, baby. Let's go. So there, um, I'm actually not aiming at him. Like, if it hits him, that's fine. I'm trying to get the spread of my Ludens because my Ludens would have killed him. He's low enough. So that's why I threw that. I actually didn't think I would hit that spear. I mean, obviously it looks sick. I could just lie to you. Oh, Dom, Dom's insane on Italy, dude. I could just fucking make all these plays. now. No, I literally just thought that he would die to the Ludens proc, so I played for that. I think there's a chance that Jace comes this way. Oh my god, I didn't even notice this guy. Oh, I smited him, red smited him there. God, I'm just trying to kite it out. I actually didn't notice him at all. There's an early, or there's um, a Annie here. I'm going to keep on autoing things so that I get the talisman regen. Just going to try to get the auto there. It's all good though. Oh, let me get the stack. I've got such insane stacks right now. Give him a tongue face real quick. So when you're super snowballed like this, uh, Lich Bane's really good. 
So Lich Bane Zan uses the normal build. This is not the build that I prefer, but if you want to play Nidalee, you have to do things like this. I'm actually just insanely ahead of this guy now. 715 and up CS. This is like, looks like he DC'd or something. <laughs> That's actually what the um, thing looks like, but yeah. Okay, so keep on clearing. Oops. So you can Q, um, Q and then pounce and cancel your Q animation. I tried to do it there, but I failed. I'll try to show you again at some point. I'm gonna look for like a greed spare. I didn't get the full duration of the pounce. I should have killed him there. I messed up for sure. That's the rest from Nidalee coming in. Did not pounce uh, long enough range. I would have killed him. Because you control where you pounce even if you have a mark. Okay. So let me just try to show you here. So so you have the camp aggroed, right? You see how I um, Q'd and then I W'd and then I got my pounce reset? It's really useful for getting just more pounces off in general. Just like a smart animation cancel. So like here, uh, I'll, I'll do it again on, on this one. So there like I just get the, um, the Q off while I'm pouncing. It's useful. I'm gonna go behind this. I have 150 stacks. My auto like one shots him now. Matter. Literally just died. Alright, we can just get Rift Herald and end this game. We've actually stomped the game so hard at this point. My lanes played well though. Set me up for a lot of uh, good stuff. I was in the right place at the right time with like being there for the bottom fight because I was probably just gonna go one for one um, if I wasn't there. But overall, I think it was good. Um, decent game. Like pathing wise, it was good. I made a couple mechanical errors, but not like too much. Obviously, that just comes from like Rust not playing the champion that much recently. But I mean, when you do when you do a how to dominate series and you're playing like 32 different champions or something um, in like three months to give content, not all of them are gonna be brushed up to like your max potential. Like back in season uh, five, I actually played a ton of Nidalee, which is like why I have the fundamentals down. Um, I actually played her in LCS quite a few times. There, I did the Q, Q cancel again. Yeah, she used to be a much more difficult champion though. Um, because you had uh, multiple different auto resets. Each form change was an auto reset and your Q was an auto reset. So you could auto, form change to your human form, uh, auto again, then change back to your um, cougar form if you hit a spell, auto again, and then Q in like less than a second. You could get all those things off. And it was just insane damage. Oh, uh, he already knew this guy was here somehow. Let me uh, drop this bottom. Yeah, this game is just so far behind, it's insane. Like, normally I would want to go back and spend my gold here, but this is so much of a stomp, I don't even really need to. Here you're just throwing out spears. These spears don't really matter. Um, you're not going to, like, hit many of them, but if you hit one, it's, like, half of somebody's health, so you might as well just throw them. Yeah, like, and if you, as long as you're throwing them in good directions, you'll eventually hit one. There I should have waited, I think. Gonna heal him. Yeah, like these spears are like almost never gonna land, but it's just like it's about hitting that one, you know? That one will probably just result in a kill if you get it.
Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I missed quite a few there, but it doesn't really matter. You're just throwing spears for pressure. Like, it, it actually feels really bad to play against. Anyone who's played against a Nidalee will, will understand what I mean, but like when you're just sitting there and you're just having to constantly dodge spears, and you know if you get hit by one, you're just dead. Just feels awful. And you've got like Zoe throwing shit at you as well. One of the worst feelings, man. All right, I'm gonna go pick up my Zanyas. Obviously this game is super snowballed, so like normally I would back for items. If you're sitting on 2k gold, you get Rift Herald, it's a good time to back. But um, in this situation, it's like, we're just trying to end the game, you know? Snowballed really, really hard. Okay. Yeah, normally you change to a sweeper here, but they don't even like have wards on the map, man. Yeah. Go over here. You want to normally control angles like this um, to throw spears. Like we're we're just throwing skill shots blind, but if any of them hit, it's like their entire health bar. You know, look at that auto too. It's like the dark harvest auto is insane here. My team doesn't have to be um, super careful by getting poked because we do have Nidalee. That sucks. Wanted that stack really bad. Yeah, they're playing really careful with poke. Like, Zoe and I aren't really hitting much. But, I mean... This is the glory of it, you know? Like, we don't have to hit anything, really. It's a free kill. That's when you have to hit. hit. Like, when your team lands CC, then your spears are free, you know? But before that, you're just tossing spears. Now, in games, I know I've, I know from streaming, people are like, people, they, they judge your nearly about how many max range spears you hit. Your nearly should be judged off your path in early game. That is the most crucial part. And like, obviously it doesn't even matter about like being judged or anything. What, what just matters is like, that's the part of the game that matters the most. <laughs> I didn't die. Whatever, doesn't matter. I'm gonna end the game here. GG. Actually, maybe we won't end the game here. I don't have a Dark Harvest stack right now where I could one-shot. Oh, that's actually really unfortunate. My Q got cancelled by a stun. It should have killed him there. It would have killed him in normal circumstances. He cancelled me mid-auto or he would have just got popped. Just one-shot hard. I'm not, like, focusing too hard at the moment, but... Yeah, it's just, it's just so over at this point. My Shaco support actually popped off this game. Pretty surprising. Hmm. So, for build, let me just go over this. So, for build, most games, you're going to be going um, Red Smite, Runic Echoes. Red Smite is just essential because it, it allows you to pressure them into getting speared. Like, when you have Red Smite, you walk up to them, you start autoing in range form with the Red Smite, and that pressures them to run away from you so you can land spears easier. That That's, like, your your biggest ganking tool. After that, Lich Bane Rush is really nice. Um, there's other options you have. If you're kind of behind, I recommend going Murillo. I think Borello is really nice. It gives you health, um, and then you can go double pen with this. Also, you're um, you're gonna get uh, a decent amount of CDR from your normal build anyway. You get 10% from here, 10% from this, 10% from Lich Bane, and 10% from uh, from Blue Buff if you have it. So you don't have to worry too much about that. I let this guy heal. Uh, so your CDR is gonna be fine. You don't really need CDR boots on um, Nid. It's really just about. Uh, 
getting the correct items for the game. All right. So other options you have, um, a lot of times versus Annie, if Annie gets super fed or like she's becoming a big uh, nuisance for you, Banshee's Veil, really core. You have that option. Um, you have the option to play uh, with... Um, yeah, like Rod of Ages, if you really want to go for scaling, I don't recommend it, but in some lower elos, it is still viable. Um, yeah, you have you have a bunch of options. Like the Lich Bane Zanya is the most core. You can go with themes as well if you want to play a more supportive style. If you hit one spear, your next heal will be like 600 health. It's really useful. Like right now, my heal is close to 600 already, but that's just because I'm so strong. But um, early on in the game, with just um, just the themes on Holy Grail, you can get really really potent. Um, yeah, heals on it. Got that honing spear right here. Whew. Now they're landing, boys. Alright. GG's. Yeah, the anti afk would after, like, we got super far ahead, but thank you guys for, um... Thank you guys for watching this episode. Like I said, Nidalee, we've been trying to, uh... We've been, we've been trying to do one for a little while. It actually took me three recording attempts because the first two games, like, I won one of them, but the game just was, like, really ugly. It was, like, there was a bunch of level two fighting. And even though we ended up winning the game and it was a pretty decent game, I thought that it wasn't the best um, example of how to play Nidalee because I was do, doing a lot of substandard things just to get out of the situation. Uh, I'll honor Eric Dota, Zoe. I asked him in Champ Select, actually, uh, if he could play Zoe because he's Zoe one trick. And Zoe and Nidalee have, like, decent synergy. The long-range poke is insane. Um, overall, pretty good game. 10-2-7 on Nidalee. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. I will see you on the next video. Peace.